there. I'm Sister Denise Glazik. I'm a Springfield Dominican for nearly 30 years now, and I love my life. I'm the youngest of 14 children, seven boys and seven girls. I've lived in community all my life. Hi, I'm Vicki Schmidt. I'm a lay woman, and I've spent my life in nonprofit leadership. I was drawn to the Dominicans many years ago when I began to find out about their charism and their pillars and how invested they were in the common good of humanity. Hi, I'm Sister Bernice Yip. have been so for over 60 years. Originally, I'm a farm girl from Warren, Michigan, which is over in the Thumb of Michigan near Detroit. And I've been aware of Dominican Sisters ever since I can remember because I had cousins in the Racines and I at Adrian's in my parish. And then the, I'm a Springfield Dominican, and basically it's my parents' fault. <laughs> Unwittingly made me do it. They exposed me to these joy filled sisters. Hi, I'm Kara Myrna. I'm a Springfield native, maiden name Robinson. Um, primarily educated in the Springfield parochial school system and by several Dominican sisters from grade school through high school. So I've, through my education, I was introduced to the Dominican community. And as I grew up, I started to explore that community further. And last August, I completed the formation process and was accepted as a Dominican associate. Well, I think I'm the only one. This is Sister Denise. I think I'm the only one who is a publicer. I was not exposed to the Dominicans until um, probably late junior high in summer catechism, or some of you may know it as PSR or religious ed. So mm -hmm. um, interesting that I had such a, a limited exposure, but um, then when I grew up and moved away from home, they were in my parish. And so that's how I became familiar with them and saw that they were normal, joy-filled. Uh, they loved to uh, play, pray, eat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I fell in love with them. So uh, they drew me in right, right away. Say the same thing, Denise. Um, I forgot to say that, that I had Domin Dominicans teach uh, in our CCD program um, in Sherman where I grew up. So um, I had an early introduction to them also. Interestingly enough, I was dating at the time, had been dating for six years, the love of my life. My plan was to get married, have kids, and help at one of our family businesses. But um, I guess the Lord touched my heart in a special way. And these Dominicans were put literally in front of me. Once I befriended them, I just couldn't get enough. And as a good Catholic girl during Lent, I started going to Mass, and I started getting involved in the parish. So I did what Sister Beverly Jean did. I helped with our CIA, Bible study, Eucharistic minister, prayer services, and so forth. And Sister Sarah at the time, God rest her, she just died um, October 18th. She was very instrumental in my life. I learned that it wasn't doing the things because there was more. Since I thought I was doing what they were doing, learning that it was the becoming who they were. Denise, I can resonate with that, the concept of there's more. When I was in high school, that's when I was introduced to the Springfield Dominicans, and that's why I say it was my parents' fault, because they made me go to this high school where none of my friends were, none of my family, and it was, you know, I was tremendously grieved when I first had to go to St. Augustine School in Richmond, Michigan, staffed, not because it was staffed by the Springfield Dominicans, but just away from my friends, and however... I'm pretty outgoing, and so I made friends quickly, and in my senior year, 
There was a popular song at the time and I resonated with the words, is this all there is to life? When I, again, I observed the sisters and I went to Sister Mary Claire, uh, one of our sisters, Sister Mary Claire's reception here in Springfield, I really was very attracted to this type of life, their, their spirit, their, um, you know, I, I saw them at times when things weren't the greatest, but in the midst of whatever, they, they always emerged as joy-filled people. And so there was more to life. And for me, it was joining the Springfield Dominicans. I remember in grade school, Sister Mary Luke, uh, she stands out for some reason. And I must have had her probably in fifth grade. And she was just a bright light and in that class. And um, she, she created in me a, a deep interest in who, who are these Dominican sisters? And but I wouldn't really explore that um, until until much later. Really, I I got involved with Mother Teresa of Calcutta uh, in my late teens, and ended up going to India, and then coming home and staying involved with her community for probably 15 years. Uh, and it was really after that that I reconnected with Dominican sisters, because I what I found was. Um, as much as uh, I love being with Mother Teresa's sisters and working with them in so many different places, I, I wanted something here at home that I could hitch my wagon to. And you know how, uh, I think it was Barack Obama who said how important it is to hitch your wagon to something bigger than you are. And I didn't have that here in Springfield. And so that's when the Dominicans really became uh, much more prominent in my life. And it started at Ben and Casa uh, when the sisters were in Riverton. And, um, uh, and even today, um, you know, to know that I'm part of this community, it means the world to me. And uh, I'm just grateful to be a part of it and to know so many of the sisters. During my formation process as a Dominican associate in one of the first classes, yeah, September 2019 meeting. So one of the first classes, St. Catherine and St. Dominic were the focus of that class. And St. Catherine's words of be who God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. They spoke to me during that class, but yet it was also a reflection point for me because I firmly believe that God called me as a grade school student to music ministry. And it was, I was already in the parochial school system at that time. So I had met Sister Mary Lawrence. She was my principal at St. Agnes. But when God called me to music ministry, and when I say a grade school student, I mean fourth grade. <laughs> um, <laughs> That introduced me to Sister Frances Mary. She has, she's just been such an integral part of my life since such an early age that that relationship in meeting her and studying with her really as a music minister, but then as a piano teacher and my first voice teacher, and then my confirmation sponsor and my sponsor through the Dominican associate program, really being like a second mother to me through my life. If I hadn't met her, or if I hadn't listened to that call from God at such an early age to be a music minister, I I, who knows where I would be at this point, but I really attribute listening to that call to be a music minister as the start of building my relationship with the Springfield Dominicans. And so St. Catherine's words of be who God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. Those words mean a lot to me. They have a very special meaning in my life. Carol, what did that call feel like to you in fourth grade? Because mine didn't come until I was 20. So what, what did it feel like as a fourth grader? How did you know it was God or? So I transferred to St. Agnes in third grade. So I did kindergarten, first and second in the public school system in Springfield. 
And then my parents decided they wanted to send me to parochial school. So I started at St. Agnes in third grade. And at some point in fourth grade, I can't remember the exact time of year, my mother would be able to tell you (laughs) her memory is incredible. Um, But at some point during the year, mom and I were at mass and I turned to my mom during mass and I said, I want to sing in that choir. Now, St. Agnes, um, St. Agnes Church, one whole side of the church parallels the choir loft. And I recall that mom and I always used to sit by the choir. So I don't, I don't know if it was more of like a, well, that's a really cool activity. But I, I also remember, oh, wow, my memory is like sparking tonight as I'm talking about this. I think it was during the Eucharist, like during the Holy Holy and um, that part of the Mass. And I turned to my mom and I said, I, I want to sing in that choir. And she responded to me. She goes, Kara, those are all adults. You, you're a child. I mean, that's, those are literally all adults in that choir. And I just said, Mom, I want to sing with them. Perhaps that was one week of a few that I expressed that to her. After expressing it a few times, mom knew a member of the choir from a recent koinonia. And so she talked to this lady who talked to Sister Frances Mary, and I had to audition for Sister. (laughs) And that's really when we knew, oh, Kara can sing. She has a voice. There's something there. So Sister welcomed me and that's where it all began, really. I mean, I've, I've been in music ministry since then. So to answer your question, Sister Denise, what did that feel like? How did I know? Kara, I'm wondering, you know, I only know those promptings uh, in retrospect. So I think, I think when, when there is that nudge toward something that's going to gonna continue to define who you are and what you love, we don't realize what those are until much later. And um, I don't know if that fits for you, um, but um, sometimes it took me a long time to realize that <laughs> some things that that connected the dots to how your right. life, the trajectory of your life goes. Right. I definitely. I when I was in fourth grade and that young, I yeah, I didn't know to call it to identify it as a call. Right, but looking back on it and reflecting on it and putting puzzle pieces together that's it's genuinely how I feel Kara and and Vicki and Denise I can I can identify with what you're saying in the in the sense of the realization of of a call it it's a mystery and we do we respond to a call I think for all kinds of reasons like what I was saying is that all there is to life it's like just looking for something better something deeper not really knowing what I was getting into so I will I'll never forget that when I got here in Springfield the first thing we were going to do is they sign up for classes and I was like well wait a minute I just finished classes because I had just graduated from high school I don't know what I thought I was going to be doing but it again it, it's just something all kinds of mixed reasons as to um, why we embark on a certain journey I remember saying to my the other high school students who were saying to me, why are you going? And I would just say, I got the call. I got the call. And they'd go, Bernice got the call. Did you get the call? I mean, that's the only way that I could explain it. Somehow I got the call. And unless I consciously have a, an awareness that every day God is calling each of us, you know, just to spread hope or joy, just respond in the ordinary way. So that that's part of, I think, what vocation and responding in this time, in this place. It, it's sort of like the gospel passage where Jesus says in response, you know, to um, the disciples wanting to know before they were the disciples, you know, where 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 do you abide? And Jesus says, come and see. So there's something attractive there. And then we have to go and see. You know, and this just really blows my mind because as I was thinking I was being called, I didn't know what that meant. And I was ready to hang up. I wanted my plan 
get married, have kids, be in our family business. But like you, Vicki, there, there was something I wanted to hook my wagon to, so to speak. And the strange thing was, is I didn't know, Kara, who Dominic and Catherine were. Never heard of them. Didn't know what Dominican life was about. Didn't know Dominic. And then I went to my brother and I said, I think I'm going crazy because I want to be a, I think I'm being called to be a sister, but I don't know what that means. And he said, go talk to the sisters. Go talk to Sister Sarah. Go talk to Ms. Beverly Jean. So I got up my nerve to my sister-in-law and said, come to the Bible study with me. So that was kind of my entrance into it. And then I made an appointment with Beverly Jean and I said, you know, I feel like I'm being called, but I think I'd be a good wife and mother. And she said, if you'd be a good wife and mother, you'd be a good sister. Come and see. You're free to go anytime, but come and see. If it's a fit, you'll know. And if it's not, you're free to go. There was another woman in the parish who was interested. She had three great aunts in the congregation of Dominican sisters. So she said, come with me. So we came over to Springfield and I, I kid you not, the moment I stepped in to the front doors, I knew I was home. I didn't know why. I didn't know how. I just knew I was home. Incredible. Before I had even met anybody else, I was I was so comfortable walking in that front door. What I learned throughout my time through those first few visits is the sisters ate together, prayed together, and played together. And as I realized it later, that's really, I mean, that's Dominican life, but that was also the Glazic life. I didn't go to parochial school. Like I said, I was a public, but we went to mass every week. We went to CCD. Uh, we studied our catechism at home. We had devotions at home. So I grew up very Catholic, but but that community, living with so many, we shared. It was ours, not mine. We ate together, played together, and prayed together. And little did I know that is Dominican charism. So it's of God. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Absolutely. Even though Amen. Know, even though we don't know what the will is. <laughs> mm. yeah. And that, that was the strange thing, too, when I did enter. And, and I remember saying to Sister Dominica, the prioress general at the time, I don't want to be a nurse and I don't want to be a teacher. What else you got for me? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, uh, Denise, when you were speaking, it reminded me of something that uh, Vicki said um, in passing you. Vicki, you talked about we sisters and the four pillars. Can you say a little bit more about that? What's your interpretation of what do we mean by the Dominican four pillars? Yeah, well, it, it's the the four things that define uh, our ministry of prayer, preaching, community, and what's the other one? <laughs> study. Study. Yeah. Study. I'm going. The, the one I didn't like. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that's the one I do like, really. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we're all different. But, but uh, you know, when, when I took time to learn, and, it's an, and I didn't really learn about them until I was an associate, but in that preparation, I thought, that already defines my life. I'm doing all these things, not to the extent the sisters have, of course, but, um, you know, I don't have a master's in divinity or uh, scripture or anything, but but I, ha I am a lifelong learner, and um, those, you know, I, I, I have a life of prayer. I want to be united with the Dominican sisters in their prayer. I pray the, for the life of the world, um, several times in the week. Um, I, I love community. Um, I'm a single woman. And so to, um, you know, like you, Denise, uh, I wanted to have five boys. <laughs> I wanted to get married and have a, enough for my own basketball team, um, but that, but that wasn't in my stars, you know. When when your life doesn't turn out the way you had hoped, then you do what you can to make it as rich as you can with everything else that is available to you. And becoming uh, active with the Dominicans through the associate program uh, really fit that bill for me. And that wasn't until, you know, I was probably um, in my 
maybe around 40, 45, so any closer to 50 that I became an associate. Um, but I had been in spiritual direction with the sisters and in preaching in my work with Teresians International, I, you know, I, I have a big speaking role and a writing role with that 2000 member organization around the world. So I, I feel like I'm preaching all the time mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and responding to the needs of the organization in a spiritual way. And it's interesting because Teresians has five dimensions. Our extra one is ministry to one another in community and then the world in which we live. That's that's what the pillars mean to me. Bernice, thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. I just want to say in regard to when you were talking about study and you don't have a degree in this or that, I think of this ongoing formation that we're involved in um, and in, in part, it responds to something that was going on in my life when I was looking for more. I remember my mom said to me one time, Bernice, you are never satisfied. No matter what, you're always looking for something else. That's part of what also it has planted that desire in me to learn more. And yeah. so as a Springfield Dominican and as associates, um, we have that opportunity to continue to delve deeper into the mystery of who God is and how we are all interconnected. And you mentioned the prayer, Vicki, for the life of the world. That prayer is the undergirding of what we, you know, are about and so on. And I, I'm pretty sure it's, I hate to say, I'm not sure that it's on our website, but I'm sure it must be somewhere on our website. Yes. Okay. It is. I got the word that it is. And, and that's in part what this podcast is called flow for the F for life of the world, for the life of the world. That's what we're about. Yeah. That's what each of you, whether Carrie, you're speaking about your music ministry or um, Denise, your deep desire um, not to study necessarily, but still there's an ongoing formation that as I see it, that mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily involved in, you know, going to classes five days a week and so on. It's, uh, there's so many opportunities to, to learn, to yeah. delve deeper. Yeah. You know what, the um, pillars for me, community, again, I grew up uh, youngest of 14, all in the same house, one bathroom, uh, <laughs> and we made it and we shared <laughs> So then one thing that meant more to me, because my family were, were very supportive and ecstatic when I told them that I was entering, you know, when you go and when you go and well, I got to wait for the letter. So when I joined the Dominican Sisters of Springfield, I was a postulant for just about a year and then became a novice. And you're a novice for two years, canonical year, and then the next, but the year of my profession, which would be like someone's uh, getting married, equivalent, you know, a, a special, special day. Yeah. Um, my mom had died 30 years, uh, 30 days before that. Oh. That most special day. And I was just devastated, absolutely devastated. And yet the community was there for me. They were there surrounding me with my family on the day of profession and at her funeral, the wake and the funeral, the sisters came and attended just the support of that. So I experienced the community and the prayer, which are a huge part of the charism. And Kara, to your point of music ministry, there must have been nearly 50 sisters who were at the funeral mass, who were in the choir loft singing at my mother's funeral. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, mm -hmm. but glorious. And I have nothing but gratitude for them. It was a gift. I, Sister Denise, reflecting the sense of communities, I have also experienced that and been on the receiving end of that. Since the Springfield Dominicans have been in my life for the majority of the years that I've been on earth, um, they've seen me through my educational experiences and personal experiences. And as I grew up to be a young woman and now a mom, 
becoming a mom during the pandemic, of course, we have been very um, isolated from each other. So that's been hard because one of the things that I really want to do is bring my son <laughs> to Sigurd Heart <laughs> Convent and introduce him to all of the sisters that mean so much to me. But that day will come. It will come. It's going to happen. But just knowing that the sisters are praying for me and praying for the little one and praying for our family and the amount of love and prayers that surround anyone that want to be a part of the community is really, really incredible. One of the things that I have loved the most since being a Dominican associate is receiving the prayer request emails and just knowing who else we can pray for and include in our daily thoughts. The community, the, the Dominican community, I should say, is quite special quite special. Yes, joy filled, but filled with so much love too. And Kara, you know, this, in this challenging time that we've been living this pandemic, that there are so many lonely people. And so maybe, maybe this podcast can reach out to them and let them know that they don't have to be alone, that True. there is community. Um, they can become part of the community if they, if they desire it. That's why community is so important to me too. I can't imagine uh, going through life without this big community of Dominican sisters. And really, it's not just the Springfield Dominicans. We belong to all the Dominicans, don't we? Um, so that, I just find that so cool that I could travel to any country in this world and visit a Dominican monastery or a convent and say, hey, I'm an associate. Um, I think that's, I, I value that a lot. Very true. In fact, I just started the spiritual direction program in race with the Dominican sisters there. So there's an example of that extension, and I feel right at home. Yes, indeed, Vicki. That reminds me how our Springfield Dominican life touches so many other Dominican congregations throughout the world, really. Yeah. I, I say when I taught school, the school was my, um, or when I taught, my classroom was my world. And then I was a principal and the school became my world. And then I came here <laughs> to the mother house to uh, be a secretary with the leadership team. My world is literally the world. And so, you know, that whole concept of for the life of the world. So yes, indeed, what an opportunity to touch lives with so many uh, different congregations as well as uh, the Dominican friars. So we happen to have th uh, three Dominican friars living right here on the property and um, one who comes here daily and celebrates Eucharist for us. And I want to go back to one thing, Vicki, you were talking about and also Kara about, and the three of you actually, about um, community life. We also have associates who are prayer associates mm -hmm. and that one can become a prayer associate sure. uh, just by contacting Sister Joan Sorge, uh, just going to our website or just calling the mother house here, just, you know. And um, it's wonderful, that Dominican pillar of prayer, but it's also community because like uh, Carrie, you were saying, you get the prayer requests, we pray for each other. And it's it's so personalized when we can see mm -hmm. the actual needs that people have. Mm -hmm. I would like to just touch on the other pillar that is so important with the Dominican family, people have asked me, you know, what's OP at the end of your name? And uh, for some, when I was in school, it was like, is that operating principal? <laughs> no, it is order of preachers, order of preachers. So the whole Dominican family, um, the men, the women, the sisters, the nuns, um, we have OP and we preach by the pulpit of our life. So regardless what ministry it is, any Dominican, uh, even the associates are preachers. They preach from the pulpit of their life, whatever their ministry is uh, and their life for the world. And for my experience of that as well, uh, I was on our preaching committee for a number of years, 11 years, I believe. And we wanted to make sure that that was number one goal, that every sister knew that she was a preacher by the profession of her vows as a preacher. <laughs> and the second way was that some are called to formally preach. 
and um, they've studied scripture, and it might be at an evening prayer service. If, like, for my experience, I was out in a parish, and so I preached reconciliation services, wake services, communion services, informal preaching, and it was such a gift. So I experienced it in two ways because I did formal preaching. I preached for retreats, faculty retreats, mission, parish missions, but also my ministry as a pastoral associate. I was a teacher for a time, and I knew that was not where God was calling me to. I I did it and went there every day, but I was pretending. Kara, back to your point of be who you're meant to be, and you're set to work on fire. I was ready to... S- <laughs> I felt like I was being set on fire in the classroom. Uh, <laughs> and I said, you got to get me out of here. You know, I love the kids, but I I didn't feel deep down that's where I was called to be. But in the parish life, my pastoral ministry, I was out in people's homes. As you said, Kara, the sisters were there in your good times, your sad times, the suffering. And so that was also a, a kind of preaching. Uh, I remember in particular, I worked with some hospice folks, and one of the mother-in-laws that I worked with, she was having such a hard time. The family was in denial, the cancer, and certainly cancer affects the whole family. So she invited me out to her house, and um, I, I just sat and listened, and I thought, back to my home life, what would my mom do in this situation? But chicken soup heals everything, right? <laughs> so at this at this woman's house, as she was talking about her daughter-in-law and her son and the family dealing with cancer, I made chicken soup for her family. And so that was just a way that I could minister, I could preach, mm-hmm. my gift of cooking. Um my gift mm-hmm. of healing. And um, so that was preaching by the pulpit of my life. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is it that Francis uh, said was spread the gospel? If That's necessary, right. use words. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. you know, the other thing I just uh, recently figured out also, I'm a pie baker. I have preached in a lot of ways by making pies for our our community bazaar. I made 30 one year uh, in the single day. But the other thing I've, I'm using the acronym pie. Oh, yeah. It's time to roll out pie. (laughs) And it's an acronym for pray for vocations, invite vocations, and encourage vocations. I am the pie maker. <laughs> yes, I love it. Very good. Oh, my. Denise says our vocation director, you are the pie maker. Yeah, that's right. I a slice of pie. <laughs> so, so the community can uh, have their slice of pie and preach, preach with pie. Yeah. Pray, invite, and encourage. Uh, very creative. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I think um, our love for the sisters, our love for the congregation. Mm-hmm. Um, I know when I left my ministry in Bradley, uh, they wanted to keep in touch. We had been in, in that parish for 94 years. And mm-hmm. and so people ask, how do, how do we keep in touch with you? Well, yeah. our Dominican website. <laughs> We're on social media, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, mm-hmm. uh, YouTube. We have great videos. We have informational, formational videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, so by our website and hopefully post-pandemic, mm-hmm. certainly come back to Sacred Heart Convent and visit the sisters. They will, they will love human interaction again with the outside world. Uh, we have Jubilee Farm. There's tons of ways. Yeah, and yeah. and even online. Um, you can go to our website and and make a three. Well, there's a, a virtual retreat. You set it to your own schedule. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, you can do it in a day, you can do it in three days, but it's all there for you. Prayers are there for you. News about the Dominican sisters and what they're doing. And for Cor Unum, uh, they have first and third Sundays. They pray together. We share an article uh, or something about a book, something about a topic. There's just so many ways of keeping contact. Another thing is uh, so many people, and, and all of you would have experienced it, of being in touch with those sisters who taught you years ago, whether it was religious ed or music or whatever, find out where they are, what they're up to. Many would say, oh my gosh, they got to be dead by now. But we live a long, loving life. Make that opportunity of possible reconnection. So Denise, you mentioned Cor Unum. Um, so what is Cor Unum? Cor Unum is a house on our east side in Enos Park area. And it's Sister Beth Murphy and Sister Lori Kirchman and Sister Mary Claire Fickner. And they lived together and it pre-COVID was um, gonna be a like a house of hospitality for young women in the area who wanted to live community life, pray together. So, so the opportunity will still be there. The house is ready as soon as, hopefully as soon as COVID is over. <laughs> And you can and you can learn more about that on Facebook or contact any of the sisters, um, Beth, Lori, or, or Claire, and uh, they can give you more details about that. I think uh, for our younger audience, um, you know, I, you know, we can only reflect on our own experience, uh, lived experience, but. Uh, I wish I had had a relationship with the Dominican sisters in my early 20s. And um, I, was, I was very involved in ministry at that time, but I didn't, I hadn't connected with the sisters yet. But I'm just saying that that whole idea of hits your, uh, hits your life to a bigger, um, I don't know, how did I say that? Hits your wagon to something bigger than you are. Um, how important that is in, in as you develop your life and as you continue to discern uh, what is God calling me to? Uh, how am I supposed to figure out what I'm supposed to do? You know, entering into a relationship um, with someone who can talk you through a lot of your questions can be a real asset for you. Um, it can be a real grounding experience for you. And um, I just encourage you to consider it. And um, I, know, I know that the sisters at Jubilee Farm have, um, have invited some young adults who were questioning um, and wanting to explore their own spirituality. Um, I think they were called the nuns. Uh, the non, no, you know, non-religious. Um, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but the sisters were willing to talk with them and to process. Well, you know, where do you, how, how is God working in your life? Um, those are important questions for all of us, but I think particularly uh, for young people today, because it is one crazy world out there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. and it's very important to. Um, to process that in a discerning way. Discernment, uh, one of the things I learned was discernment is between a good and a good. Mm -hmm. So had I married the love of my life, that would have been good. It just would have been a life that was very different. Yeah. Um, coming to religious life, it, it's a good. Mm -hmm. And it's for some people. People, God is still calling men and women to religious life. And uh, so any vocation, uh, Vicki, you are a single lay woman. That's a wonderful vocation, living out your life as a single woman. Mm -hmm. Carrie, uh, Kara, you're a mom, uh, married with children, a child now. That's a great vocation. It's a witness to the world. Uh, and Sister Bernice and I are vowed religious. And that's a valid vocation. And um, it's a way of living how God called you to live. 
And, and I'll just um, add to that, Denise. Um, I have this quote here from this uh, Jesuit father, Pedro Arupe, I think you say his name. And anyway, he says, the essence of the human vocation is to fall in love with God. What you are in love with, what seizes your imagination will affect everything. It will decide what will get you out of bed in the morning, what you do with your evenings, how you spend your weekends, what you read, what you know, what breaks your heart, and what amazes you with joy and gratitude. So fall in love, stay in love, and it will decide everything. Oh, I love that quote. I love that. Don't you love that quote? Awesome. Yes. Oh, I need a copy mm -hmm. of that. <laughs> I have one here. I do too. <laughs> but you know, Sister Ida Ford, this is how she says it. Um, find that which gives life a deep meaning for you. Something mm -hmm. worth living for, mm -hmm. maybe even dying for. Something that energizes you, enthuses you, enables you to keep moving ahead. Yeah. That's Absolutely. what one to find choose either you know they're both saying the same thing but i just i have those quotes here by my uh, yeah. computer because it's like um that gives me hope that's awesome very powerful yeah yeah i think you know after all that we've talked about i think the every soul matters and we are all given a gift um, that's to be shared with the world. And by connecting with something bigger than we are, we can share that gift. And we can, um, you know, we, we can make our lives uh, a living gospel uh, in the world today. And the world is in such need of peace and love and loving actions that um, every single soul matters. And there's just, um, it's somehow, there's a gift when, when you do things within the context of community, there, the strength that you gain in the doing of the, these acts of love takes on a, a whole new dimension. And uh, so I encourage young people today to, to consider where is your life going? And what do you want to give away to the world? You know, what is your purpose on this life? Um, consider reaching out to the Dominicans or any other religious religion or religious order that um, that graces this planet and um, and see how much you can give away of this one um, life that you've been given. So thank you, Bernice, Denise and Kara. Appreciate it sharing this time with you. And thank you, Vicki, for those words. Uh, this is Bernice. And I think my final words are going to be those of Sister Edith Ford that says, find that which gives life a deep meaning for you, something worth living for, maybe even dying for, something that energizes you, enthuses you, enables you to keep moving ahead. Or Kara, what about you? <laughs> um, our time together today has been really special. I've enjoyed sharing my reflections and experiences and hearing all of yours. My uh, closing quote, I guess, I love quotes. I love inspirational sayings and psalms, etc. But mine comes from St. Catherine of Siena. Uh, be who God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. Thank you, Kara, for um, quoting St. Catherine. And, and I, too, would just say as this podcast is for the life of the world being a dominican sister friar associate um we are scattered throughout the world for the life of the world to preach the truth and um especially in this pandemic i think a huge part of what people are missing is community and and how much perhaps we've taken that for granted. The fact that uh, Dominican life, one of the pillars is community life. Um, something willing to give your life for 
something, someone to come home to, someone to support you to go out, be sent out into the world to preach uh, by the pulpit of your life. So let's set the world on fire with uh, study, ministry, prayer, common life. Um, send that good energy out there. Okay, and let's let's talk about pie. Okay. <laughs> you can actively be involved in promoting vocations, no matter who you are, how old you are, where you are, by P, praying for vocations, inviting vocations, that's what the I stands for, inviting nieces, nephews, brothers, sisters who have the capacity to serve, mm-hmm. and E, is encouraging, encouraging vocations now that it's a valid life. Uh, Talk to a spiritual director, vocation director, uh, see where you are being called to give your life away. Uh, So pie, pray, invite, and encourage vocations. Mm -hmm. Amen, sister. (laughs) (laughs) Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Loved being with you and um, hope we can do it again sometime. Yeah. Thanks, Denise. Bye, Thanks, Nicole. Bye, Vicki. Bye, Bernice. Be well. Be well. <laughs>